Sa ating nakaraan na episode, pinuntahan natin ang Itogon 13 sa Itogon Lengen. Ngayon naman, sa episode na ito, samahan niyo ako as we visit La Trinidad, Benguet, na kung saan ipinagdidiwang kada Nobyembre ang Adivai Festival. Tara, samahan niyo ako! Good morning! So, as you can see, nakagayak na naman tayo dahil meron na naman tayong pupuntahan ngayong araw na ito. Ang pupuntahan natin ay isang festival dito sa Benguet. At dadalawin natin, itutour ko kayo bago magtapos sa buwan ngayon ng Nobyembre. Tara! ground sa Wangal Sports Complex kung saan ginaganap ang event na ito, ang festival. Ngayon naman ay bibisitahin natin yung labintatlong munisipyo ng bayan ng Benguet na siyang bumubuo sa festival na ito. Tara, saan natin? The Adivai Festival, an Ibaloy word meaning coming together and having fun is an annual agritourism event focused on rediscovering the ingenuity of the Benguet people. Their rich history, culture, arts, trades, and industries. A Divai Festival is held every month of November with a month-long activities located in La Trinidad, Benguet. Adivai is the provincial festival of Binget as coming together of its 13 municipalities which are La Trinidad Binget, Itogon Binget, Bakun Binget, Bugyas Binget, Sablan Binget, Kibungan Binget, Bokod Binget, Kabayan Binget, Mangkayan Binget, Atok Binget, Kapangan Binget, Tuba Binget, and Tublay Binget. Tublay features a lot of tourist destinations that offers various experiences from hiking, climbing, and swimming to farm tours and cultural exchanges. Known as the land of fascinating caves, Tublay has so much more to offer than your regular mountain destination. On top of the sights, sounds, and other experiences such as foot picking, boating, swimming, caves and clouds at your fingertips, its people are lovable finding joy in sharing their crafts, concoctions, and culture. From rock formations to ore cards and berry farms to coffee, fruit preserves, woven accessories, and pasalubong items.
The group of investors arrived from USA on February 20 to 21, 2019 with Mem Gina Lopez, the LGU, Communities of Amongdolan and Tuol, University of the Cordilleras, and I Love Foundation ran their visit smoothly and they were amazed by the beauty of the municipality. The itinerary offered to the visitors was composed of Paye River, trekking, Bungaungao, cave spelunking, glamping, side trip at the Balletary, Bayokbok Falls, farm visit at the clan and visitation of the Dublai Agri Marketing and Food Processing Center called as Tam FPC. Sablan Benguet is a fifth class municipality in the province of Benguet, Philippines. The term Sablan was derived from the local word Sabdang, a local tree which thrived in the area. Sablan was created officially as a municipal district on July 1, 1927, under Executive Order No. 61, dated May 17, 1927 by then American Governor General Leonard Wood. Sablan is also known as the fruit basket of Binget. Notwithstanding the weather disturbances of late, the municipality of Sablan is bent on celebrating the locally institutionalized annual fruit festival, now in its ninth year. One deviation from the earlier festivals conducted is the extended celebration for this year, making it a month-long spectacle from August 7 to September 4, 2023. The purpose of which is to create more opportunities for our locals to trade with our prospective spectators and day tourists besides cultivating more creative events that could be conducted and presented in more convenient timetables. This way, the public patrons could pre-arrange their schedule to enable their enjoyment in one or more special events of their choice. In the early part of 1900, during the American regime, Tuba started to have a written history of its own. Tuba was then the part or the Baguio Township. In fact, when the Americans started their administration, Baguio was made capital of Benguet when the first civil government was established in 1900. Tuba Benguet has a lot of tourist spots, and these are the Dinosaur Island and Holy Land, Ben Cub Museum, Woodcrafts and Souvenir Shops, Brown Madonna Shrine, 
Sipitan and Yangud Tunnels, Santa Lucia Realty Corp, Tabora Sports Arena, Marcos Park, Felix Mining Corporation, Marcos Highway Palispis Aspiras, Cannon Road Zigzag Road, Sinimbaan Cave, Klondike's Place, Bridal Vale Falls, Colorado Falls, Tukang or Aran Cave, Mount Santo Tomas, Kabuyo Burial Cave, and Asin Hot and Sulphur Springs. La Trinidad, officially the municipality of La Trinidad, is a first-class municipality and capital of the province of Benguet, Philippines. According to the 2020 census, it has a population of 137,404 people. The municipality is known for its strawberry plantations earning the title Strawberry Fields of the Philippines and as well as the Rose Capital of the Philippines. La Trinidad is within Metro Baguio area. The town's name comes from the Spanish phrase for the Trinity. La Trinidad is featured in various local and foreign media. Also, Estobasa Colorful Houses was introduced as a representation of the Philippines during the Travel Tour Expo 2019. Some of the main highlights in La Trinidad Benguet are as follows. The Strawberry Farm, La Trinidad Public Market, Vegetable Trading Post, Estobasa Colorful Houses, Bell Church, Mount Kalugong, Mount Yangbo, and Bahong Flower Farm. A total of 48 tourist attractions or sites have been identified in La Trinidad during the tourism planning workshop held in 2014. However, in terms of state or of product development, only 11 of these can be considered to be existing. Have sufficient facilities and services that offer various activities and products and actually being visited by tourists. Strawberry Farm in Betag This site, measuring about 20 hectares of strawberry farms, is what makes La Trinidad a unique tourist destination, particularly among domestic tourists. La Trinidad is the only place in the Philippines that produces strawberries on commercial scale. Current tourist activities in this site include strawberry picking, farm tour, and shopping for Pasalubong. Rose Gardens and Flower Farms in Bahong 
These farms popularized La Trinidad as the rose capital of the Philippines. Farm activities for tourists include farm tours, flower harvesting, viewing and education and information on cut flower growing. As early as the 13th century, Mangkayan was thickly forested land wherein hunters from neighboring places frequented in search of wild game. Legend told of two hunters from Awa, Bugias who pursued a deer into this Mangkayan forest. The deer, harassed by the hunters and their dogs, fell into a raven. Tired and weary, the hunters made a camp for the night right on the spot where they recovered the deer. They skinned and roasted and feasted on their game the whole night leaving their fire burning through. The following morning, they found that the rocks by their campfire was malleable and could be easily molded. They brought home some samples of their discovery and fashioned tools and other artifacts. Thereafter, the natives searched the place for this mineral ore. Products fashioned from their discovery were bartered with much needed commodities from the lowland. Rich Spanish businessmen from Ilocos Coast took notice of this product and asked the traders their source of copper. The natives simply replied, Nang Kayang, meaning way up to eastern mountains. Nang Kayang eventually became Man Kayan, the name adopted to the area up to the present. Seven different mines were discovered in the Mangkayan Suyok region during Admiral Pedro Duran de Monfortes' 1667 expedition and Simon de Andes' administration 1770 to 1776 mentioned Igorot copperware. In 1833, Galvi sent ore samples from Gambang, copper, Suyok, and Mangkayan to the governor. The first Spanish mining claim on the Cordillera was made by Thomas Balbas E. Castro on 26 March 1856 and established a mining company called the Sociedad Minero Metallurgica Cantabro Filipino de Mancayan. The company ceased operations in 1875. Some of the tourists passed in Mancayan Benguet are as follows Madao O Falls. St. John the Evangelist Church, John and Kenny Farm, Palidan Slides, CPJ Community Center, Lepanto Mines Golf Course, the Amborayan District Pistol Association, Nayak Twin Decline Tunnel, Lepanto Mine Tailings Dam, Lepanto Air Strip, Mount Bayoyo, the Can Waterfalls, Inodi Falls, Am Am View Deck. The municipality of Kapangan already existed during the Spanish regime. Its legal existence was made during the American civil government through the Act No. 48, passed and approved on November 22, 1919. Republic Act No. 4695, passed on June 18, 1966, better known as the Division Law separating the province of Benguet from its mother province, Mountain Province making now Benguet comprised of 13 municipalities among which is the municipality of Kapangan. Being an 
a mountainous area, Kapangan is comprised of rolling terrains used for farming. However, you could find some flat areas that are also used for farming like in Barangay Paikak, Balakbak, Kayapas, Sagubo, Pungayan, and Datakan. Also, there are places with irregular, ragged terrain and towering mountains. The highest point of Kapangan is elevated at 1,700 meters above sea level, located at the boundary of municipality of Kibungan. The lowest point is at 200 meters above sea level, located at the boundary of Kapangan to the province of La Union. Two-thirds of the total land area is made up of mountains and hills which are very steep, rough, and rugged. The remaining one-third of the area is devoted for agricultural purposes like farming and foresting. Kapangan has several creeks and rivers found all over the place. These are the Amburayan River, Baginas Katiwan River, Nagilian River, and the Sili o Asol River. Amburayan River flows to the north, draining at the South China Sea. Baginaus Katiwan River is located on the southwestern part of the municipality. It flows west to the Copias River. Nagilian River is the continuation of Balila River in La Trinidad, also located on the southwest part of Kapangan. Sali o Aso River is also located on the southwestern part of Kapangan and joins the Balili River. Kibungan is a fourth class municipality in the province of Binguet, Philippines. According to the 2000 census, it has a population of 15,036 people in 2,949 households. The 2007 census reveals an increase of 15,700 and a so 2007 population census in the total population. The municipality is located 62 kilometers north of Baguio City. Available historical records show that the municipality of Kibungan is one of the original 31 rancherias of Distrito de Benguet during the Spanish regime. Distrito de Benguet was one of the mountain region organized into six Comandancias Politico Militar, which was established by a Spanish commandante named Don Guillermo de Galvi in November 25, 1864. When the Americans came, the Philippine Commission of the First Philippine Civil Government enacted Commission Act No. 48 on November 22, 1900, which led to the organization of local civil governments in the formerly organized Spanish rancherias into townships with appointed leaders called Presidentes. From 1945 to 1952, the municipal officials were informally elected through a process involving names of callers assigned to the candidates. The formal election of municipal officials started in 1953 through secret balloting. This process was carried up to the present. Kibungan is popularly known in the province as the Switzerland of Binguet because of its pine trees and rocky mountains. Deep provinces and cliffs separate and isolate many of its sitios and some of its seven barangays. Although some plateaus, hills, and small valleys can be seen in the locality, Kibungan is dominantly mountainous. Aside from its beautiful mountains and century-old rice terraces, Kibungan has many rivers and streams. Waterfalls on high cliffs decorate the mountains, especially on rainy days. Many streams contribute the formation of three big rivers that join the Amburayan River in Kapangan and eventually drain to the South China Sea. The municipality is within the Cool Highland Mountainous Zone with elevations at more than 2,500 meters above sea level. Itogon Binget is more popularly known as the Golden Haven in the region. 
with a mineral-rich land and mountains oozing colors of crystal white to yellows to rich terracostas and golds, rising from ordinary and semi-arid landscapes. Driving through the now completely paved roads to the area, visitors get a glimpse of the ruins of once prosperous mine sites that closed shop a few years back when the rich ores were depleted and gone to mock. Lakes of granite gray, tellings still spread over some views. Itogon best speaks of mining town. The present town sites was once a wilderness, sturdy looking pine trees and green vegetation grew luxuriantly along the streams, where cool, fresh and clear water gleamed all day. Given the strength of Itogon as a tourist destination, the tourism stakeholders of Itogon envisioned the municipality to move towards the following idea outcome. We envision Itogon as a choice destination for mountaineers and adventurers that seek for quality and unique experience, nature, and culture in a nurturing environment. Some of the attractions are as follows. Mount Ulap, Mount Ugo, Mount Pigingan, Mount Marikit, Mount Bidawan, 1300 swimming pools, Pahak Resort, Binga Dam or Power Plant, Crosby Park, Kayoko Heritage Houses, Abunan Heritage House, and Agno River. Kabayan Binget, officially the municipality of Kabayan, is a fourth class municipality in the province of Binget, Philippines. According to the 2020 census, it has a population of 15,806 people. Kabayan is the site of centuries old Ibaloy mummies buried inside caves scattered around its villages. The third highest mountain in the Philippines, Mount Pulag, is located in the territorial boundary of the vegetable farming town. The name Kabayan was derived from the term Kaba Ayan, from the Ibaloy word Baay, a root crop vine thriving in the place. Most of the early Ibaloy settlements in the area, which include a dead and Duwakan were named after crosses in the heavily forested area. Bayan is best known for the antiquated centuries old mummies and Mount Pulag, the third highest mountain in the Philippines. The Kabayan Mummy Burial Caves are officially proclaimed Philippine National Cultural Treasures pursuant to Presidential Decree No. 374 and is under consideration as a World Heritage Site. The mummified body of Apo Anu, a tribal leader, was stolen but recovered by an antique collector and was returned to the town. Archaeologists from various countries have visited the town to promote preservation of the mummies due to deterioration of the cadavers. The caves containing the cadavers of these mummies have been declared by Monument Watch as one of the 100 most endangered sites in the world. Mount Pulag is a destination for mountaineers, hikers, including picnickers. At its summit, 
the climbers can see the surroundings of the whole North Luzon. Bukod was established as one of the 19 townships of Binguet during the American rule with the enactment of Act No. 48 on November 22, 1900. On August 13, 1908, Benguet was established as a sub-province of the newly created Mountain Province with the enactment of Act No. 1876. Bukod is also known as the Sulphur Spring of Benguet. Bukod is occupied by three major ethno-linguistic groups. These groups are collectively known as Nicarats. Inhabitants who belong to other ethnic groups came to Bukod because of intermarriages, employment, and business opportunities. One of them is the Iboloy ethno-linguistic group. Second one is the Karao ethno-linguistic group. And the last is the Benguet Kalamuya ethno-linguistic group. They occupy barangays Pito, Akip, Dila, and Poblacion. Aside from Bukod Sulphur Spring, you can also enjoy boating and inland fishing at the Ambuklao Dam and more. And the other three spots are the Downhill Bike Trail, the Bisal Footbridge 6 and 7, Ambangaan Tunnel, Ambangaan Pito, Pigingan Falls, Abiyang Hot Spring, Bisal River, Pinagjan Waterfalls, Banau River, Bobok Bisal, Kiti Creek Otbong, Badakbuk Sulphur Spring, and the Greater Nayao Lake. We also have here Tok Tok Tokadeng, Tob Tob Waterfalls, Bugias, officially the municipality of Bugias, is a third class municipality in the province of Mingat, Philippines. According to the 2020 census, it has a population of 44,877 people. The municipality is home to the mummy of Apo Ano, one of the most revered and important folk hero in Benguet prior to Spanish arrival. According to folklore, Bugias got its name from the word Bugas or Bugas, which means rice. Another version of its origin would be an Igorot settlement during the pre Spanish time called Bugayas which was modernized and spelled as Bugias by Spanish authorities. Bugias is primarily an agricultural town. It is one of the leading producers of highland vegetables, especially carrots, in the province of Benguet. Most of the vegetables produced in the town are sold at the La Trinidad Vegetable Trading Post or are marketed to other parts of the country. Some of the attractions in Bugias Benguet are as follows Butel Resort, Sebang Spanish Trail, Municipal Hall View Deck, BSU Campus Bugias, Gatawa Stone Coffin, Natublung Vegetable Terraces, Tabeyo Lake, Sabang Anito Falls, Mount Kitongan, Mount Natoo, Shogun Burial Cave, Apoano Cave, Agna River, Mount Pak, and Mount Purgatory.
Atok, officially the municipality of Atok, is a fourth-class municipality in the province of Benguet, Philippines. According to the 2020 census, it has a population of 19,218 people. The area of Atok was previously referred by the natives and Spanish colonizers as Shantog, an Iboloi word for mountainous. Spanish military officials and missionaries arrived at Shantog in 1892, establishing presidencias, tax collection stations in the area and its surrounding settlements. The Iboloi phrase Nai Patok Shi Shantog, which means on the mountain top, was later shortened to Atok. This rustic town has been a favorite day trip destination among many Baguio locals but is barely noticed by tourists. Suddenly, when the buzz surrounding its flower parks resonated on social media, this bucolic town was suddenly catapulted into fame. When you are in Atok, you must visit these places. Northern Blossom Flower Farm, Halsima's Half Tunnel Portion, Heights Place, Osukan Spanish Trail, Sakura Cherry Blossoms Park, Highest Point Philippine Highway System, Mount Timbak, Loyang's Restaurant, Tayo Gardens, Our Lady of Lourdes Grotto, Atok Benguet, Mount Olis, Mount Olis Viewpoint, Heights Place or Benguet Kochi Sakura Sisterhood, and the Lubo Lake. Bakun, officially the municipality of Bakun, is a third-class municipality in the province of Benguet, Philippines. According to the 2020 census, it has a population of 14,535 people. During the Spanish period, Bakun was a rancheria of the Comandancia Politico-Militar de Amburayan, Ambusungan, currently a barangay of Bakun, was a rancheria of the Comandancia Politico Militar de Tiagan, Distrito de Benguet. When the United States took control of the Philippines, the American Congress issued Act No. 48 in November 1900, placing Bakun under the province of Amburayan and Ampusongan under the province of Benguet. On August 13, 1908, Benguet became a sub-province of the newly established Mountain Province with the enactment Act No. 1876, and the municipal districts of Bakun and Ampusungan became part of the sub-province. In 1917, the Bureau of Non-Christian Tribes recommended that the western border of the Mountain Province be pushed eastward such that the entire sub-province of Amburayan and large lices of Lepanto and Benguet would be made part of Ilocosur and La Union. In early 1937, Ampusungan was merged with the Bakun, the latter carrying the name of the township while the former became a barangay. The issuance of Republic Act No. 4695 in 1966 included Bakun as a regular municipality in the newly created province of Benguet. The famous tourist attractions you can visit in Bakun, Benguet are the following. Mount Lubo, Vegetable Terraces, Mini Hydro Plants, Bago Swimming Pool, Torres Marias Waterfalls, Patan Falls, Pikau and Sakop Falls, Sinapbat, Bakun Benguet, Wanga Barbarit Falls, Mangta Falls, Labay River, Ampusongan River, Mount Gadgadayan, 
Mount Liblibu, Mount Tenglawan, Duligan Rock, Mount Kabunian and Bakun Boreal Cave, and Takip Waterfalls. Dahil tayo nga ay nagugutom, uh, maghanap tayo ng pagkain dito. Nandito tayo ngayon sa food court nila. Hopefully makahanap tayo ng uh, pagkain uh, igorot. Ayan. Kasi alos karamihan dito mga street food. Mga shawarma, empanada. Para maiba naman sana uh, yung what-what or yung pinunag or blood sausage. Walang watwat -wat dito tapos na ang watwat -wat kahapon. Kahapon yun kasi libre. <laughs> Hopefully lang na may mahanap tayong nagbibenta ng ganun ngayon. Tara libutin natin. Sinubukan natin maghanap ng ganun pagkain. Wala talaga. <laughs> Commonly ang mga sa festival kasi na ganito ang mga nag-stall yung mga street foods, shawarma, Kaya binansagan na pag may mga festivals, nagiging shawarma festival na eh. <laughs> so, ang option namin ay yung kalajo. So, puntaan natin. Ayan, nandito na tayo sa kalajo. Usually, matagal na ito eh. Bata pa ako meron na yung kalajo. Kaya, pumukha rin sila ng stalls tuwing may festival dito sa Benguet. Ayan, dito na tayo kakain. So yan, kakain na tayo. Ang in-order ko ay dinakdakan tsaka munggo. So meat to vegetable nila dito sa Kaladyo ay 135 pesos. Pag gusto nyo naman umorder ng meat to meat, um, 145 pesos. Ako naman is dinakdakan and kalabasa. Umorder din kami ng halo-halo kasi sobrang init ngayon. Pero ayun na, natutunaw na. Wait lang. <laughs> Natutunaw na yung ice cream nila. Magkano halo-halo? So, halo-halo nila, ganito siya kalaki is 120 pesos. Ang isa? <laughs> ice cream na hindi na halo-halo. So, masarap yung ninakdakan nila. Masarap siya. Tsaka sulit na rin siya sa presyo. Ayun, katatapos lang namin kumain and uh, parang medyo sumakit yung chan natin. Ayan. Kaninang umagas kasi before kami pumunta dito, ang umagahan ko ay ice cream. Tapos ang kinuha ko pang ulam, dinakdakan at meron pang halo-halo. Kaya ayun, nagkanta halo-halo na. Kaya medyo, um, uh, medyo parang umiiba yung chan natin. And pag ako kasi, pag lumalabas ako, Um, inaasahan ko na pag kumain ako sa labas or binom ako ng tubig sa labas ay uh, kumukulo na yung aking tiyan. Eh, good thing din na kung saan man tayo magpunta, meron tayong dalang loperamide diatab. So, hindi pa ito sponsored. <laughs> pag kailangan nagtatravel or pumupunta sa mga ibang lugar, mas okay na din na meron tayong mga gamot na dala. Pati rin sa sakit ng ulo sa akin, usually ang iniinom ko ay Advil. So, konting patalastas muna. Ang video ito ay brought to you by Diatabs. Baka naman. <laughs> Joke lang po. 